Hi, I'm Mick Presnell, and, and this is a tutorial on categorical propositions, the basis of Aristotle's system of categorical logic. In this tutorial, we'll look at the nature of categories, categorical propositions, and begin to explore the relationships between categories. The 4th century philosopher Aristotle is considered to, to be one of the great geniuses of all times. He single-handedly developed formal logic. His logic would provide the basis for modern symbolic logic, the basis of all computer programming today. Aristotle was the third generation of ancient Greek philosophers that provided the basis of Western civilization. His teacher was Plato, and Plato's teacher was Socrates, the three most influential thinkers of the Western tradition. Plato and Aristotle's works not only provided the basis for many of the areas of academic study today, their ideas were used by Christian and Islamic scholars to shape how we think about religion as well. Aristotle himself has been credited with the founding of the study of botany, zoology, physics, political science, ethics, anthropology, communication, and of course logic. So what do we mean by categories? Aristotle was a keen observer and developed systems of categorizing plants and animals, the beginning of botany and zoology. For Aristotle, having true knowledge of something requires knowing in detail what characteristics describe it. For Aristotle and philosophers for many centuries, knowledge was in sharp contrast to mere opinion. We have knowledge about something when we know which characteristics that sort of thing definitely has and doesn't have. Dogs have fur, four legs, and give live birth. They don't have scales. They don't fly. We should study things to discover what characteristics define the category or type of thing that they are, and then we can claim to really know them. For instance, once we determine the characteristics of an animal, we can begin to compare that animal to others. Do they share characteristics? Then maybe they belong to the same general category, like dogs and rats both being mammals. Once we define categories of things like mammals, we can use that category to guide our understanding of new things we experience, gradually refining our knowledge by developing increasingly accurate categories. This was the vision of Aristotle for what became science. For the Greeks, a living organism reaches its maximum potential when it is able to manifest what is unique to it. A tree is a great tree when it develops the most complete way that that kind of tree can develop. Squirrels are exceptional squirrels when they do well the kinds of things that squirrels uniquely do. So what about us? Aristotle argued that what makes human beings unique among the other creatures of the earth is our ability to reason. So to be an exceptional human being means to develop our ability to reason. We share emotions, desires, bravery, even loyalty with many other animals. But it is our use of reason alone with these other characteristics that make us distinctly human. This was the core of the ancient Greek vision of humanity. We share characteristics with other creatures, but we are unique in our ability to, to apply reason to control and guide impulses, to know the difference between bravery and recklessness, and between justice and senseless revenge. A categorical proposition states a relationship between two categories. In this example, the category of dogs and the category of things that are brown. All dogs are brown says that the only dogs that exist are dogs that are brown. We will be using a visual method of showing these relationships called Venn diagrams. In Venn diagrams, the part of the category that is empty is filled in. So in this case, the part of the circle that would indicate dogs that aren't brown is filled in. The only part of the dog category remaining represents dogs that are also brown things. Of course, we all know that there are dogs of other colors, but by being clear about what the proposition actually says, we are in a better position to test the accuracy of our category. If we can find a dog that isn't brown, we would know the proposition is false and the categories aren't defined properly yet. The main point here is that the proposition states a relationship between two categories of things, in this case, dogs and brown things. A proposition has three parts. A subject, copula, and predicate. The subject is the first term of the proposition and the predicate the second term. The copula, which means joining together and is the root of copulation, is the term that indicates the relationship between the two categories. 
It is traditional to use a capital S and a capital P to symbolize subject and predicate. In summary, Aristotle invented categorical logic. Categories are types of things that share the same characteristics. Categorical logic is about the logical relationships between categories. Categorical propositions are statements with a subject, copula, and predicate. Venn diagrams can be used to visualize relationships between categories. Next, we'll be looking at the four standard types of categorical propositions.